Welcome to 3D Experience World, and thank you for joining us for this session on extending the value of SolidWorks Electrical with DraftSite. I'm Joe Wilkie from the SolidWorks Electrical sales team, and today I'm joined by one of our electrical specialists, Thomas Smith. SolidWorks was founded 25 years ago with the goal to put the power of 3D on every engineer's desktop. Today, we offer a wide range of software solutions to address mechanical and electrical design, data management, simulation, tech pubs, and even more. For nearly nine years, SolidWorks has helped electrical engineers and designers greatly reduce the time and effort to produce high quality, accurate documentation for their logical systems. So whether they're divining electrical, fluid, or pneumatic systems, our schematics products have delivered tremendous value with productive tools and extensive automation, consistently helping our customers cut documentation time by 50% or more overall. Another key benefit of SolidWorks Electrical is that it allows collaboration across projects and libraries, and it does that for multiple applications. Among an electrical engineering team, this means the members can divide tasks as needed, perhaps with one working on high power distribution while another focuses on PLCIO and yet another is developing the panel layout. It really doesn't matter how many people are contributing because SolidWorks Electrical is generating a single set of project documents, consolidated reports, and maintaining all the cross-references silently and very reliably in the background. In this context, SolidWorks Electrical Schematic Professional is the first interface that we will use to access SolidWorks Electrical. Now consider an organization that uses SolidWorks CAD software and wants their electrical and mechanical teams to work together more effectively. For this case, we introduce SolidWorks Electrical 3D, a SolidWorks add-in, and our second interface to SolidWorks Electrical. With Electrical 3D, the mechanical engineer can define system components as appropriate, for example, by specifying a motor ideally suited to a project's requirements. By adding the motor directly into the electrical project, the electrical team will know exactly which components to use to power, control, and protect the motor. In addition to adding components, the electrical 3D user can also create 3D cabinet layouts, route wires and hoses, cables and harnesses, and create high-quality 2D mechanical drawings using SOLIDWORKS' best-in-class drawing environment. Today we turn our focus to DraftSite, a third interface to access SOLIDWORKS electrical library and project data. We're going to show you ways that the DraftSite user can work with SOLIDWORKS electrical in just a second, but first a little background on the tool and why we created this interface in the first place. DraftSite is a feature-rich but very affordable CAD tool from Deso Systems. Since its release, countless companies worldwide have turned to DraftSite to reduce their CAD costs without sacrificing critical functionality on which they've grown to rely. For a fraction of what they were paying for their previous tool, DraftSite users can access and maintain their massive collections of legacy drawings and create new ones whenever they need to. Best of all, there's virtually no learning curve. Their users feel right at home and are productive from day one because all their previous CAD commands that have become second nature to them over the years work perfectly well in DraftSite. So for compatibility, functionality, usability, and affordability, these companies have found that it's hard to beat DraftSite for general drafting needs. The SolidWorks Electrical add-on is included with every license of DraftSite, thus creating our third interface to SolidWorks Electrical libraries and projects. As Thomas will demonstrate, this interface gives the content developer and the manufacturing technician powerful tools to interact with the design team using tools that they already know and use daily. Thomas, what would you like to show us? Hey, Joe. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, that was a great introduction. And, you know, I'm really excited to, to dive into this content and, uh, kind of, yeah, demonstrate exactly this, this third level of integration uh, that Joe has been talking about and our collaborative efforts that we can have with our 2D drafting tool, DraftSite. So with that, let's get into it. So basically what I have done is I've broken this presentation out into two sections and I want to focus on these two buckets and the tasks that we can complete within them on the electrical side and how um, you know, we are allowing individuals within production or in our drafting department to remain in the tools that they're comfortable, but then um, improve the level of collaboration and interactions that they have with our team. So today we're going to look at pre-production and production. So with that, you know, let's go ahead and dive right in here to pre-production. So when it comes to pre-production, we're going to have 
really two areas that we're going to focus on and this comes around content creation and those two areas are title blocks and symbols and also manufacturers content the concept that we are we're talking about how here is we have a team of engineers who are laying out defining the projects working with the intelligent schematic tool of SolidWorks Electrical to define the project but within you know this this department they also have needs for symbols to be created other documentation um, and content to be modified added etc you don't want to take away from the engineer who's you know devoting his time to project and actually you know getting uh, things out the door so these tasks can be de delegated to the drafting department where they can utilize their standard uh, CAD tools but be able to create content and have that readily available for the entire team even those working in the 2d intelligent tool so with that you know let's take a look okay so in this first video you can see here I'm in the standard draft site tool I have all my common you know drafting functionality that I would normally expect but in addition to that take note of this electrical toolbar this is that electrical add-in one of these right here is a title block manager what I'm seeing now is actually accessing the intelligent library that is connected that SQL database here I've actually opened up the intelligent title block that we are using within my organization I've been asked to add a note block to this particular drawing so I'm just grabbing out of my standard draft site block library and adding this note I also need to add a company logo to this so I'm again I'm performing all of my standard drafting um, functions and you know I'm sticking within the tool uh, where I'm comfortable so I'm not having to interact with that intelligent CAD tool to make these types of modifications so real quickly with commands that I'm very familiar with and comfortable with working with I can use um, to you know make the modifications that I needed so the last thing I'm going to do is quick move command and grab it by endpoint and go ahead and snap that guy into place so this looks good I'm just going to save this drawing and we'll get that saved and closed I'm gonna go ahead and take another look at this library again once soon as I click this manager I'm now into that SQL database if I preview this title block that I just modified within the database that is instantly available and ready for use for the entire team let's take a look at adding symbols so a common scenario you know that one runs into is having to create panel layout footprints now we ship with a large library that you know covers a lot of the the common manufacturers parts but there's going to come a time where you need additional manufacturers parts and particularly with layout symbols you know we there's a lot of cleanup that has to be done here I'm looking into our content portal where I can gain access to additional manufacturers content that I might not have on my machine in this situation I'm gonna pretend that I couldn't find that content so here I went out to the manufacturers site and I'm gonna do what most of us do you know we're gonna download a 2d CAD drawing and again these tasks are now being delegated to a drafter and we're not occupying that engineers valuable time so as this drafter I've done I've brought that symbol down now as I mentioned previously there's a lot of cleanup that has to be done and again we don't want our engineers wasting their time performing this cleanup so you know we're letting the the drafter access this this download drawing and he can perform all this task for one he's quicker he's been in this CAD tool he's comfortable with and and he can get these objects done so we've opened up the drawing we got directly from the manufacturer automation direct I really just need this front view so what I'm gonna quickly or quickly clean up some of these dimensions right I'm gonna remove that um, I'm gonna perform um, okay so what I'm doing here actually is I'm gonna go in and create a new symbol so again direct access to the shared SQL database and in this case I'm um, adding a component to the manufacturers part so here uh, I'm creating a symbol and I'm giving it you know just some properties and descriptions all of this is bi-directionally fed in to all of our integrated products which would also include SolidWorks mechanical accessing this same library and same content so here I've created a new symbol in the database I'm just going to open that through draft site notice again everything's opening natively directly in my application uh, 
So I'm going to perform some drafting tasks. You know, something simple here we all do is I'm going to copy and paste with reference points. So I'm selecting my geometry uh, and specifying uh, that. So again, I'm just showing the, the commonalities to the CAD tool that you're used to working in. Uh, quick placement of this, and I'm going to save it at the 00, zero insertion point. And from here, I just simply save this drawing. And now I've created a symbol that is shared into our intelligent library for further use downstream when my engineer is actually laying out uh, the panel. So real quickly, I'm just going to filter by that. There again, you can see our new automation AC drive immediately available in that library. So the last scenario that I talked about is content, our manufacturer's part numbers. So here again, you're going to see me accessing these libraries, these shared, centralized, uh, single source of truth libraries that all of our team is accessing. Uh, so again, you know, I've gone out to the manufacturer's site. Uh, I'm getting ready to input this information to the database. I'm going to grab, in this case, a spec sheet. And, you know, it's got a lot of various information, you know, that I'm going to need to extract from this uh, spec sheet and populate into um, my drive so or into my entry here so I just click new manufacturers part I can look at you know if I'm grabbing this information side by side or you know just working directly from memory however you're gonna do it but again it's a it's a process of you know getting the manufacturers content in you can see that there's a lot of options. The reason I wanted to are not options so much, but again, a lot of integration into these other products as far as linking um, to 2D footprint symbols or even schematical representations. So what you're seeing here is I'm tying this new manufacturer's part to the new symbol that I created. So I'm closing the loop for my engineers downstream. They simply select the manufacturer's part and they're going to know exactly um, what symbology is going to represent that so you know lastly here i'm going to populate um, some of the size and information again this just helps with appropriate uh, placing uh, within our layout and you can get as detailed or as limited as you want when populating this information um, so again it's just whatever you want uh, for time's sake you know i'll just uh, limit what i'll fill out here just so we can get um, moving forward but uh, just some sample values um, that I've populated one thing I want to point out is again as I search this there's my new entry it is found and available uh, for the entire team all right so switching gears we've talked about what is available within pre-production so moving to our next bucket of production let's take a look at some of the common tasks that we um, find here so as we've talked and engaged with our customers, you know, we find out that there is a need and things that are happening on the shop floor and they have a need to communicate uh, various changes, markups, modifications back and forth. Uh, we have found that our customers, uh, you know, are looking to complete these tasks and not only complete these tasks, but quickly and accurately communicate this information back to the team. So as far as production markups, you know, if something is interfering as we close the door or, you know, things need to be shifted around, being able to mark that up. A funny story is, you know, when I started off as a controls designer, our shop um, was about a half mile uh, between the engineering and the shop production we would literally drive paper copies of markups back and forth. It's silliness, but again, that's what we did. And a lot of companies struggle with how quickly they can get that information between the two departments. And then also how that information is consumed. And if it's in a clear, clear manner so that those can be done. So whether that's produ uh, production markups or even markups that are ha happening uh, within the field and being able to capture that, we've also found that there's a lot of need for the actual panel um, production crew to be the ones who lay out and configure the terminal strips and other features of this because they're the ones who actually have the tribal knowledge and the, the in-depth knowledge of the panel configurations and so they would like to have more control over that. Then we also have reports that are useful within production such as wire labels, component tag labels, terminal tag reports, and even a panel bomb. So these are a lot of tasks, and when DraftSite and the SolidWorks electrical plugin come in, we bridge the gap again, just as we saw before. Everything that we're going to do 
inside of DraftSite is a real-time collaborative integration with our SolidWorks Electrical uh, project. All right, so in this video, what I, again, working with the standard toolbar, what I'm going to do is on one of these tasks is I'm going to uh, open the project. So here you can see the projects in red. That's indicating that my electrical engineer is working on this project as well. So we can start to see some of this collaboration. Here I have access to all the project documents. What I'm concerned with is this uh, front panel cutout. Uh, we're going to have to shift the location of this HMI due to some interferences. Um, so I quickly, again, I want to get this information to my team so they can start you know, making these modifications. So with the power of DraftSight and the annotative tools that I have within the CAD tool that I'm comfortable, I'm going to quick, quickly create some notes. In this case, I'm using a RevCloud. I'm going to throw a text note in here just to start, again, to articulate the changes that um, are required at this point in time. Uh, so nothing special happening here, but again, just showing the ease of use of our draft site application. So we're just, uh, well, look at that. We say, please move the PLC left two inches, but this is an HMI, so you'll have to forgive my drafter's typo there. So we're going to move that uh, HMI over two inches, and I think we're just going to call out uh, the updated dimension here for clarity. All right, so we've made some notes as far as locating this. Now again, I want you to see the level of real-time interaction. Simply save this drawing. What I'm going to do is go back to this project's document manager. Oh, oh, actually first, this is really cool. Check this out. I can see on this connected users, everybody who is uh, actively engaged on this project. Currently, I'm going to select my SolidWorks mechanical engineer who's working on the actual 3D model of this. And I'm going to send him a message that says, hey, I just marked up that HMI cutout sheet uh, to reflect these changes and the new location. Please check that out and confirm, um, you know, once this modification's been made. What is absolutely amazing about this, guys, is this is direct in application. We're not having to leave our tool to go to email. My mechanical user just got a pop-up that said uh, that he, he needs to work on it. Right here, I've gone into my terminal strip uh, manager. So I'm directly modifying intelligent project data directly from DraftSite. Here I'm actually adding accessories or end plates you know, to this terminal strip. So quickly again, right within this interface, I have some access to the functionality within electrical to place uh, certain elements to rearrange this terminal strip. But right here, clicking this magic button, generate drawings, I'm able to execute an intelligent SolidWorks electrical command that is going to create a new document and add this intelligent document to the SolidWorks electrical project. All the work being done by my production engineer in the tool that he has available on his shop floor and that he's comfortable with DraftSite. Um, so real quickly, guys, I'm going to show you that uh, we had this guy created. So here's my terminal strips. I'm quickly going to open up just a sample just to show you that these guys were created on the fly. Uh, so again, a very nice document that conforms with the standards defined in SolidWorks Electrical, all done on the draft site. All right, so let's. lastly we want to talk about reporting. So here I am about to generate and run a report that was again designed and configured inside SolidWorks Electrical. Right here, what I am interested in is in this wireless label. I need to extract the wire numbers from this project and be able to export that to our wire label machine. So right here, I'm just ex uh, exporting this out. I created some documents that are added to the project for visibility, but right now I'm going to create the actual shareable XML file uh, that I'll put out uh, to that printer. So I'm going to just going to select where um, I want this XML file to reside and what I wanted to name it, etc. So I'm just going to call this wireless and I'm going to put it in my reports book. So what is nice is not only have I created these documents, so let's go here, look at my documents tree. If I open up reports, come down, you know, here we're going to see that wire label XML. Now that is attached to the project, maintained with the project, and I can easily share that out going forward um, with my team uh, as needed. So again, as what I've just displayed, showing the versatility of 
the draft site integration and how those two really come together and break down the barriers that we, uh, organizations have faced in the past. Joe, back to you. That was great. Thank you, Thomas, for sharing those examples with us. You know, at first it seemed a little complicated, having so many different ways to access the electrical system, but it really makes good sense. When we think of SolidWorks Electrical, our first thoughts usually go to the schematics application because that's where we define all of our connections. But a complete system requires input from many disciplines. But when we consider the expertise that the mechanical designer brings to the equation, it's just practical to give them tools not just to place components that the electrical engineer defined, but to actively be able to research components that fall within their engineering domain and add them directly to the project themselves. What really impressed me today was the scope of functionality that DraftSite can perform simply by accessing SOLIDWORKS Electrical. There's a tremendous benefit when anyone on the staff with basic CAD experience can contribute right away on drafting tasks like editing symbols or title blocks with no training. But seeing the manufacturing technician parametrically edit the terminal strip, create the drawing, and make all those labels really hit home. We've met so many engineers who understandably prefer to leave those tasks to the manufacturing team, but because the manufacturing team is typically not equipped with parametric ECAD tools, this becomes a purely manual process for them. In the end, we find the technician poring over a schematic print with a highlighter and a notepad gathering terminal symbols to determine the best arrangement and layout strategy, searching for wire numbers and device tags so they can manually enter them into a labeling system. Re really, all of these tasks require hours of work and thousands of items redundantly and manually entered with a very high risk for error. What we've seen today is clearly a game changer for electrical manufacturing. So whether you're designing schematics, creating 3D assemblies that incorporate logical systems, or ensuring that a project is ready for manufacture. Through schematics, electrical 3D, and draft site, SOLIDWORKS Electrical provides the appropriate interface to get the job done fast without the time, costs, or risks associated with redundant data entry. This concludes our presentation. If you'd like to learn more about draft site, you can certainly learn a lot more and even get a trial version from draftsite.com. But for an excellent overview of the product, we recommend this webinar on demand from Lynn Allen, formerly known as the face of Autodesk, as she discusses DraftSite from the perspective of the AutoCAD user. And for a wealth of information and many deep dives into specific functionality, we invite you to Thomas's Go to Stage page, where he has cataloged many webinars covering topics from basic schematic functions to complete design automation and configuration. Thank you for spending your time with us today. And please be in touch if we can be of service.